Dentist TV! Hello and welcome to Mike Mendoza's Adrian Worthing Show here on Latest TV. We're here at the wonderful Southern Pavilion on Worthing Pier. And this week we've got a load of fantastic guests, all talented and specialists in their own very special fields. And to start off with, let's say a very big hello to Emma. Hi. Emma Victoria and uh, Danielle de Beer. Hello. Hi. Nice to see you both. Thank you so much for coming in. Now you're both models, but yes. very different models. Yeah. So I'm going to start with, with Emma first if you don't mind. Yeah, fine. <laughs> what, what have you actually been doing? What sort of modelling do you do? Um, I do up to top the St Art Nude. Um, but I work in fashion. I do lingerie. I do pin-up. I do all sorts. Uh-huh. OK. I mean, you, you're, if I can say, a different size to what most girls would Yeah, I'm, I'm not the conventional catwalk model. Mm -hmm. and I'm plus size. I'm a, I vary from a size 16 up to a 22. And I'm, I'm very in demand, but Again, I get sure criticised a lot for my size and not being the average model. Are you sort of flying the flag for, for, for outsiders, really? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I really enjoy giving body positive to everyone and trying to be like, everyone is beautiful, no matter what size you are, everyone can, can convey their beauty. It doesn't matter if you're size zero, so it's 22 or, or up. OK, let's just move on now to Danielle. Danielle, you, you've entered beauty pageants over the years. You've done very, very well at it. I have, um, yes. Moving on to uh, also fashion photography. Yes. And are you doing some catwalk work as well? Um, I am. I'm going to be um, in a fashion show for Paula Queen of Hearts, mm -hmm. um, which is in February. Um, I'm also going to be um, doing front of house um, promotions girl for the charity show that's here as well in March. So. Okay, lovely. I mean, and again, you're not the conventional sort of model because you're probably slightly shorter than, than most girls are. I am. I'm only five foot two. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, normal models are five foot eight and above. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit bigger as well than the. I'm not a size zero. Really? I'm not a size zero no. Mm -hmm. So I've also, I know that most girls in the UK are actually average height of five foot four an average size of between a 14 and 16, so, uh -huh. yeah. Amy, I mean, have you had problems getting into doing what you want to do? Yes, I've had quite a few problems. I've had some people say they want to work with me and they read my stats that I'm not as small as they thought I was and they say, actually, I don't want to work with you now, um, all because I'm not as skinny or slim as, I, as they first imagined me to be. Is, is that hurtful to you? Um, it used to be, mm -hmm. um, but now I just take it as a pinch of salt, really. Um, it's part of... What I do, really, you just get used to it. Yeah, yeah. and Danielle, you, I mean, you've had your, your fair share of problems as well. I have, yeah. Um, in the uh, pageant industry, I have, yeah. Um, the very first pageant that I entered, I was actually told that I was not going to get anywhere because I was too short. Really? So, yeah, yeah. So, so on the, in the pageant industry, is it, is it nothing to do with looks? I, I always thought it's a bit, a bit of everything. It's the personality, the looks, the it's, style. It is. Um, the pageants that I have entered are normally to do with charity work. It's very much based around charity work and the person inside rather than out of beauty. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, which I prefer. So. Yeah. yeah. If it's a beauty contest, you win hands down anyway. Oh, thank you. It wouldn't be a problem. And Emma as well. I mean, you know, you, you've got you've you've had, as you say, your fair share of problems yeah. on there. But you know, you, you are stunning looking. Oh yeah. I mean, everyone has said to me I'm very pretty mm -hmm. and and. A lot of people do say it to me, but at the same time they say, oh, I'm quite surprised you've got as far as you have. And I'm like, well, everyone's beautiful and I'm just as beautiful as the next yeah, you've person. Yeah, you've got to have self-confidence. Yeah. I suppose both of you would agree on, on the self-confidence bit. Yeah. 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 I mean, have you had any sort of training for this or have you just sort of faced it yourself? Um, I, I started out as a photographer. Um, so I was behind the camera before uh -huh. I started as a model. And people kind of said to me, you should try modelling. You should just give it a go and, and just see. Um, I never used to wear makeup. I never used to dress up. And then I did one shoot and people said to me, you've really got a good, a good talent and you really should push to do more modelling. And a year and a half, two years later, here I am. And, and what about you? Um, it was actually my mum that kind of pushed me to get involved with modelling and pageantry. Um, I was bullied at school, so 
my mum tried to push me to that to that to boost my confidence, so, uh -huh. which it has. Yeah. I mean, when she first suggested it to you, how did you feel? Um, I was terrified, mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely terrified, and I didn't think I was going to get anywhere. Um, and I have, so That's I've got fantastic. titles and... Excellent. I mean, are you, you, so you, I think you're both doing lingerie modelling, aren't you, as well, you're going yeah. to be doing. Yeah. I mean, I, I would have thought you'd be in great demand for that as well. Um, I am. I do. I used to do lingerie quite a lot, but I do a lot of topless now as well, and, and I do a lot of art nude. I'm really in demand for that at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you wouldn't do that sort of thing? Um, not the topless or art nude. Not that I'm against it at all. Mm -hmm. It's just I don't personally... I don't actually have the... Um, confidence to do that um, but I will do I have done um, a boudoir shoot and I will do lingerie but that's as far as I'd go yeah yeah and when you first did started doing that did it, did it sort of worry you it was nerve-wracking mm. as hell I had to do it with a photographer I'd worked with I think it was over ten times and I had to have my friend there who's also a photographer um, I was so nervous at first I was like actually yeah I'm really up for doing it and then got to the shoot and I was like I don't want to do it now I'm really nervous I'm really scared um, but once I got the hang of it and I learned how to pose properly and, and, and I got more comfortable and I really enjoyed it and it was a really, really confidence boosting experience for me. I'm sure. Do you do the art classes? Um, I have done two, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm planning to do more. I have been asked by the people I've worked with before to say, can you come back? And are these, are these colleges that do this? Um, colleges, just general life drawing classes as well. There's one in London who wants me to work with them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to sort it out. So what you do, you just sort of walk in amongst a room full of people with their, with their boards there, and you just, sort of just much, lie down in front yeah. of them. <laughs> you, just, you just pose for half an hour, they do mm -hmm. a quick sketch, and you go, and you're paid for it, and you just go. <laughs> just wrap yourself up and run Pretty around. much, yeah. yeah. You don't feel self-conscious about it? Um, or do you actually look at the pictures they're doing? I look at them afterwards, yeah. At first mm. I, was, I didn't look at all. I was like, oh no, I don't want to see, I don't want to see what they've captured me as. But now I'm just like, I really want to see, I want to see how each person captures me individually and how differently each person captures mm -hmm. me. And it's like working with different photographers. Yeah, I'm sure. Each one captures you in a really different way and it's really nice to see you in a different way that you don't see yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you say the way you see yourself, how have you seen yourself change over the years? Um, I started out when I was about 14, 15. I used to hate myself. I'd never oh, really? look in the mirror. I just hated it. Um, but now I just I take too many selfies all the time. Everyone moans at me. Say <laughs> so too many selfies. Too. And I always look in the mirror. I make sure I am happy with the way I look. And and I and I am. I'm a lot more confident. And where I am now, I don't. If someone says to me, "Oh, well, you're quite big," and I'm like, "Well, so <laughs> it doesn't yeah, matter that, anymore." That's, that's a good attitude to have. And, and Danielle, I mean, you've you've changed quite a bit over the years. Uh, there's one of your photo shoots there, uh, and there's one of your earlier. <laughs> Uh, where you do look very, very different there. I do, yes. Do um, you want to say your brother cut your hair for this one? <laughs> he did, yes. Um, I went into my mum's room one morning and I said, Mummy, Michael's cut my hair. Yeah, she wasn't very happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> was your hair your pride and joy, was it? it? I used to have long, like, blonde hair, so, yeah, she, she definitely wasn't very happy about it, no. I see. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah. there's uh, one of your, is that actually a photo shoot, or you just did it for that, No, yeah, that was a photo shoot um, with one of the local photographers that I work with. Um, uh, that was actually, what, this week, last week, sorry? Oh, really? mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Now, you're both involved with the charity thing coming up soon? Yes. yes. Tell us something about yes. it. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> so it's for charity, um, it's going to be a catwalk. And there's going to be corsets, uh, wedding dresses, and prom dresses as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and it's, it's going to be a really fun evening. Um, it's for Paula Queen of Hearts. That's, that's on the other side of uh, it's Faring, isn't it, around that way? Uh, Bogner. I think. Bogner. 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 Bogner, Bogner yes, sorry, yeah. That's right, uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah, it's yeah. going to be a really good evening. I can't, yeah, I can't wait. I'm excited. <laughs> are you also involved? I mean, you're, I think you're involved with one in the Pavilion Theatre yes. in March. Yeah. Yeah. Are you in, are you coming to something as well? Um, no, I'm not. You might be now, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> you might end up getting dragged into it. Who knows, maybe. I, th I, th I think you should both do it, really. I know Danielle's going to be there anyway. Yes. You're probably working hard, I think, at the occasion as well. Yes. You're going to get yeah. lumbered. OK, and, and uh, Danielle, we'll just embarrass you a little bit more. We're going to have a quick look at uh, some of the photos from your portfolio. Thank you, Dick. OK, OK. So I've got my portfolio here. Um, I'll turn it around that way so you can see. All of these were actually um, very new photos from my photo shoot last week. Um, they have my sash and crown. Your fashion uh, crown? Yeah. My pride and joy. 
just some very simple shots. Um, they're all unedited as well, which I'm very pleased about. <laughs> My grateful thanks to Emma and to Danielle. Thank you so much, Steve, for coming in. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you Thank so much. Good luck to both of you for your careers. Thank It'll you. be absolutely wonderful, I'm sure. This is the Mike Mendoza, Adrian Worthing Show, coming to you from the Southern Pavilion on Worthing Pier. Uh, we've got lots more guests coming up very, very soon. Don't go away. Stay with us here on Latest TV. Welcome back to Mike Mendoza's Adrian Worthing Show. And now it's a pleasure to welcome an old friend of ours. It's Mark from Bar 42. Hello. Hello. How nice to see you. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's a lovely day, you. isn't it? I haven't seen you for a few weeks. No, um, you've I've been really busy. <laughs> I can imagine. Doing various things. Yeah. Now, Worthing has got a, a vibrant and, and popular and very much a growing uh, music scene in Worthing, which you're very much part of yeah. uh, at Bar 42. Um, I mean, you're on the seafront there. You're facing where we are at the moment. Yeah. But you've been having problems. Yeah, we've got um, some noise complaints coming in from the council from next door. Um, and we've been forced to get a, an acoustic report. It's the best thing to do, really, just to see what the issues are. We haven't got the report yet, but we've been given some sort of verbal sort of advice on what it's going to entail. And there's going to be some soundproofing issues in the back room. Um, not so much out the front or in the main part of the bar, but in the back room where we've filmed before. Yeah. Um, and it looks like it's going to be three to five thousand pounds which we don't have. So we've started a, a Kickstarter campaign um, to try and raise that funds. It's been staggering actually, we've only been going 10 days and we got 2,000 pounds already. Really? It's been, and it's been shared, I think, 1,200 times on Facebook and we've had people write songs and record songs and put them on Facebook. We've, I've had donations from all around the world, basically, from bands that have played at the bar. Uh, it's been actually quite staggering. Does this come under crowdfunding? Yeah, that's basically it, yeah. It's just a different website. Yeah, and how's that, how's that gonna work? Uh, well, basically, they donate, um, there's, it's incentive driven, so we've got a number of incentives, so we've got some really massive bands um, that have donated um, merch, signed merch, um, Bullet from Valentine and Shikari, I mean these are huge bands that would fill up you know, the pavilion in seconds, they'd sell out in, in, in minutes. Mm -hmm. um, we've contacted them and they've given us some merch. Um, we've also got local bands from Brighton and Worthing like donating stuff. Um, we've got one or two other things, I've, I've, I've offered a, to name the stage after the pe people for a certain amount of money. Um, We've got um, tickets for various festivals donated to us that we can sell. Um, so it's, everybody has really rallied around really quickly. Um, but obviously £5,000 is quite a lot of money. So. It is. And how long have you been going, did you say? Uh, ten days it's been. No, I mean, how long has long um, the, the venue been going? Uh, three and a half. Well, yeah, four years in April. Four years. But you, I mean, you've obviously had, had an amazing name over, the, over those four yeah, years. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've, only really, um, we've only really nailed the live music in the last year or so when we've done... Uh, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. It's very, very difficult to get three gigs going. I mean, if you go to Brighton, they'll have maybe one or two gigs a week, you know, maximum, with, which is promoter driven. So they mm -hmm. don't, the venue doesn't have to do any work. But uh, me and my assistant manager, Adam, we do basically most of the gigs ourselves. So we need 12 bands a week. So we've got to get them in from everywhere, which is why we get the foreign bands coming in. We get touring bands coming in, um, as well as the locals. That brings its own problems because obviously a, a touring band, someone from France or someone from America aren't going to bring any friends with them. So we've got to promote it and get people yeah, in course, and yeah. that's where we're up and down with how much, how many people we get in. Well, we wish you the very best of luck with that. I'm sorry you're, you're having the problems, but obviously you've got fantastic support. Yeah, we'll, get it, we'll get it sorted out. It's just a case of whether we sort of kind of get the money in time to you know, please to sort of like the council and everything. That's, that's Mark from Bar 42, wishing him luck. Uh, it's a fantastic venue. It's done so well over the last four years. And you've also been very good to us, and we, we appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you so much indeed. Uh, we've got another guest coming in in a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back to Mike Mendoza's Aidan Worthing Show. And now I'm joined by Dawn Gracie. Greetings. How nice to see you. Hello, you too. You're my little twisted valentine. Oh, <laughs> Don't tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Dawn is, is a vintage entertainer. Um, you teach bombshell burlesque. I do. What the heck is that? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I'm a, a vintage entertainer and uh, full-time. Not because of your own, own age. 
uh, oh, you're still careful. far too young to careful. be careful. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Um, I look, I'm nost it's all about nostalgia. Um, I've been doing it for three years now um, as a full time vintage entertainer, and my focus is 1950s and 1960s, so I don't do the, the wartime stuff. It's all about the twist and shout and the lipstick on your collar for me. Um, and uh, when I first started doing it, because I've been in a rock band for many years, I wanted to learn how to stand properly and look ladylike as opposed to the rock stance. And so I took a short course in burlesque because it's the, the whole posturing and the vintage pin-up look, the Gil Elvgren type of sort of nostalgic um, look. And very quickly I realised I absolutely loved it and thought that I could hark back from my previous sales training experience and teach others how to be glamorous and marvellous. So um, yes, that's I've sort of branded my own um, teaching is called bombshell burlesque, so it's not necessarily about um, traditional burlesque, which is stripped down to. I was going to say because normally you think of burlesque as being strippers or, or ladies with tassels on their watsits and, and swinging around. Uh, there's obviously more. How beautifully that. put! <laughs> <laughs> strippers and tassels on their watsits. Exactly. You yes. heard that here first. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, burlesque is a is a beautiful theatrical art form celebrating the female and the male form actually. Um, but traditionally, yes, it has been known to that ladies would go down to pasties um, covering their watsits. Um, but in my classes, my beginners class, obviously I don't go straight to that. It's more to do, my average age is 35 plus. It's ladies who want a little bit of fun mm -hmm. um, and dressing up in any kinds of styles. And um, it's more about the posing, the posture. And from my previous experience of teaching confidence in sales and networking, it just helps women to sort of release, I say the inner bombshell, but actually your inner confidence. So when you teach someone a little bit of a secret and a little fire in their step, then it, it changes every aspect of their lives. And then of course I then give them the opportunity to go on stage at my shows. So you put shows on as well? Yes, yeah. that really happened mm. by accident because of, you know, my day job is that I sing at people's weddings and parties and entertain like that. Um, so I'm quite used to organising things and it just, occurred to me that I might put a show on to showcase people that want to actually try going on stage, people that, that would never have thought that they could, mm -hmm. and now they do. So they get to perform alongside professional dancers as well. Um, and it's, yeah, I, I, over the past few years I've seen confidence just grow. Really? Mm -hmm. And I'm really proud of everyone that takes part in it. So, so what sort of person comes to you? Are they, are they sort of feeling down and out and... <laughs> down and out. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no confidence. <laughs> Where am I going to go next? Um, do you mean to the classes? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, the classes that in Worthing I teach at St Paul's um, every four weeks. It's a two-hour workshop, so it's not just a weekly half hour. It's actually a a work contained workshop. Um, generally it's women who have, I don't know, come out of a, a relationship or a career or have had children. They're sort of a, from a dormant period of their life where they just want to have a bit of a confidence boost um, or they just fancy having a laugh really. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it, it's all kinds of reasons. Um, or they've lost some weight or put on some weight. So it's, it's not about your size, your age or how you look. It's actually about how you feel from within because that's what people gravitate towards. So I teach them confidence. And then of course I have an advanced class who do do the full burlesque um, tease yep, down yeah. to pasties and things. So, so where did your love affair with the 50s and 60s uh, begin you know what? and where I, did it come from? I, I don't know. Really? My parents mm. asked me the same thing. I've always been told I was born in the wrong era. I've always loved um, dressing like this. So to have it as a full-time job is mm. hard work. Um, but it's, it's really good fun and really what happened was that I'd been in a sales job for years. In a very short nutshell, what happened was I won the best dressed at Goodwood Revival. You know oh it? Right. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And uh, this is 2011 and a friend of mine who runs a nursing home in Chichester asked if I would go and show the elderly what I'd been wearing to, to win this award. And she said, well, if you can sing for, for an hour, then I can pay you as an entertainer. Well, that was because having been in a band for many years, when you you know you work for eight hours and get ten quid in your pocket, mm. it was quite a quite a, a revelation. I'm sure, yeah. So I quickly put it together a set of music that I loved because I couldn't do what I do in the rock band, which is you know your sweet child of mine, your black Betty. That just didn't look right <laughs> dressed like this. Oh, but this is very good dressed like that. Exactly, yeah. what you could. Yeah. Um, and all the music that I put together seemed to be from 1958 and 1959 and the early 60s so I kind of accidentally found my era anyway long story short I went and did this performance 
did a few more, got fully booked for all sorts of shows and weddings, including Goodwood House, I performed at Earl's Court, um, all over the place. And within three months, I gave up my day job. And my boss was, really? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and Good. I haven't looked back, and I love it. So um, my performing and my stage confidence is really what I teach in my bombshell burlesque. So yeah, it's yeah. more about pushing people to be more confident and, uh, and getting out there. And the I'm show, producing the shows is another. I must say, so we're running out of time. I love the way you're dressed. Oh, thank you very much. Fantastic. Can we have a really good look at you? And uh, can you show everybody what you really look like today? What I really look, like? Really look like? Well, let's yeah, not, not, let's not, not go too far. Me, yeah. Only yeah. if you do. Me? Yeah. I, I thought I was saying it. Because people was come to my it. shows, mm. uh, gentlemen and ladies, but gentlemen will kind of go for a little bit of a, bit of a look like this. And ladies might go for a look like this. Do you want me to stand up and yes, do it? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Looking cool. <laughs> <laughs> a complete natural. So ladies might come to a show um, looking vintage or burlesque or cabaret or Chicago. Um, and I'm a bit of a fan of having a bit of a twirl. Can I have a twirl? Please do. Yes. yes. Okay. Can't wait for this bit. Got a wire hanging out, but. Uh, oh yes. <laughs> Everybody now. Yeah. Very oh, good. Well, we thank like you. that. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, ladies so, and gentlemen, yes. that's Dawn Gracie. She has a show at the, uh, the St Paul's. At St Paul's on Art Centre, 13. Twisted Valentine, everything strange and unusual. And at the Connaught on the 23rd of May. Connaught Theatre, 23rd of May, headlining Eliza Delight and Joe Black, and it's a major headline. That's show. Dawn Gracie, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.